imagine leaving your 13 year old daughter home alone for the first time ever and returning home around an hour later to find blood in various locations around the house and no sign of your daughter? That's exactly what Vicky Felton claims happened in the case that we're going to discuss today, though some people question her version of events. If you enjoy hearing about mysteries, true crime, disappearances and the occasional conspiracy, please feel free to subscribe for more content like this. Lee Orchie was 13 years old when she disappeared from her home in Tupelo, Mississippi on the 22nd of August 1992. On that morning, her mother, Vicky, the only other resident of the house, had seen Lee before heading to work at around 7.35am, around a mile and a half drive away. She claimed this was the first time she'd left her daughter home alone. Lee planned to attend an open house at her school that day with her grandmother, who was picking her up, then to go to Taco Bell that evening with her mother. According to Vicky, when she arrived at her office, she was notified that a storm related to Hurricane Andrew was heading for Tupelo, so she called her daughter at home to inform her, then again when she didn't answer the first time. After no answer the second time, Vicky was worried and decided to drive back home to check that Lee was okay. When Vicky arrived home, she found the garage door open and the light on, indicating the door had been activated in the past few minutes. She was unable to remember whether she closed it that morning. Another door to the house was left unlocked, despite Vicky being sure that she had secured every entry in the house before she left, and when she entered, she noticed blood smeared on the wall. Lee was not in the house, and sadly has never been seen again. After searching, at around 9am, Vicky contacted the police to report her daughter missing. When they arrived at the scene, police noted that there was no sign of forced entry, however it did look like there'd been a struggle. Fresh, still wet bloodstains were found on the walls, the carpets, on Lee's bedroom door, there was a pool of it in her bedroom on the floor. There was also a trail of blood leading from the hallway to the living room to the back door. Blood was also found smeared on the bathroom countertop, which led investigators to believe that someone had tried to clean up the scene, although they couldn't find a used rag or a towel anywhere. Blood and hair were found stuck to a door frame, suggesting that Lee may have hit her head there. The nightgown Lee had been wearing that morning, as well as her bra, were found bloodstained in a laundry basket in her bedroom. It looked like blood had dripped down onto the nightgown that was found in the laundry basket, suggesting that Lee may have suffered an injury somewhere above the neck. This could be consistent with her hitting her head on the door frame. Vicky claimed that Lee's reading glasses, shoes, some of her underclothes and a sleeping bag were missing from the house. Bloodhounds were brought in to aid in the search, but they weren't able to get a scent, probably due to the weather conditions. Searches were organised in the area, however there was no sign of Lee. Eight days after her disappearance, a McDonald's employee in Boonesville informed authorities that they'd seen a girl matching Lee's description in a truck in the drive through lane, however it was later determined the sighting was not of Lee. Donald Orche, Lee's father, who had moved to Germany after his and Vicky's marriage ended in 1981, but remained in contact with his daughter, moved to Tupelo with his family so he could assist in the search. However, he felt that she was dead the day my ex-wife called me and told me she was missing. My theory is that some had beat that child to death in that house. Several locals told him to look at Vicky, to which he commented, I was already doing that, I don't know if her mother was involved. In case you're wondering, Donald was nowhere near the area at the time and was ruled out as a suspect. Around a month after her disappearance, Lee's reading glasses were posted to her home address, addressed to a B.Yanbra, which would be Lee's stepfather, Barney Yanbra, who had recently split from Vicky. The surname and street address on the envelope were misspelled and it had twice as many stamps as it needed. It was postmarked Boonville, Mississippi, which was a town about 30 miles north of Tupelo, the same area where the reported sighting of Lee occurred. The FBI began investigating the case and performed a DNA test on the stamps, however it was determined that water was used to stick them to the envelope rather than saliva. Handwriting tests yielded no results. Law enforcement believed that the glasses were mailed as a distraction. On the 9th of November 1993, 
It was reported that a human skull found in a soybean field had been identified as Lee's. However, it was later determined to belong to a 27-year-old woman who had gone missing in March that year. There have been no credible sightings and no evidence has since been found to suggest the whereabouts of Lee. So what happened to her? The obvious theory is that someone, possibly someone who Lee knew considering there was no signs of forced entry, entered the house, seriously injured or even murdered Lee, and then kidnapped her and hid or hid her body. Since her remains have never been found, it's impossible to say whether Lee died that day, though considering the amount of blood in the house, it does seem quite likely. As to who the perpetrator could be, it could have been maybe a friend of the family or maybe even someone that had been grooming Lee. Or it could have even been a complete stranger who had been stalking Lee and noticed that her mum had gone out that day and saw the garage door open and just took the opportunity. It's unclear whether they were intending to murder or seriously injure or just kidnap Lee. Maybe the blood was as a result of her struggle. There's a small possibility it could have even been a burglary gone wrong. Maybe the perpetrator didn't know that anyone was in the house and it just kind of went wrong from that. As a possible suspect, Vicky believes a man named Oscar McKinley Keans could have been responsible for her daughter's kidnapping. They went to the same church as him, so were acquainted with him. He was convicted of statutory rape in 1994 and later for kidnapping and rape of a woman, then of a child under 14 in 2000. He was due to be released in March 2019 and has refused to talk in interviews relating to Lee's disappearance. He does seem like an obvious suspect, though he actually dropped the child who was in ninth grade off at school after abusing her, which does make it unlikely he'd be responsible for Lee's disappearance. Why would he kidnap and probably kill a girl, then a few months later abuse a girl then drop her off at school? It doesn't make sense. There are also a few details that could point away from it being an intruder of any kind in general. Considering the time frame this could have happened in, I think it's pretty safe to assume that the perpetrator would have to have scoped the house for some time. And in the middle of a storm, this hardly seems like the best time to do so. If Vicky is telling the truth, and that really was the first time she'd left Lee home alone, what are the chances that that one time she'd be kidnapped? Though it's definitely not impossible. According to neighbours, this was not the first time that Lee had been left home alone. Vicky even stated she would call Lee twice on the house phone so she knew who it was, which seemed to suggest that she had been left home before while Vicky was out. So it does seem kinda likely that Vicky was not telling the truth about that. Vicky stated that Lee was scared of storms, to the point where she had slept in her bed the night before, so it seems kind of unlikely that Vicky would leave her home alone for the first time ever the next day. She could have asked the grandma to pick her up earlier or dropped her off on the way to work. None of the neighbours saw anyone suspicious on that day, no unusual vehicles parked nearby or anything. It was during a storm so less people would be outside but no one reported seeing anything through a window or driving past or anything. Considering it seems that Lee was injured in the nightgown that was found in the laundry basket, it seems that her clothes were changed after she was attacked. It doesn't make sense to me that an intruder would change her clothes. I don't know what the purpose would be and surely it's just going to make it more likely they'd have left DNA evidence. Plus they would have spent longer at the crime scene which means more time they could get caught in the act. The fact they tried to clean up in the bathroom is also kind of strange. Why would the culprit waste time cleaning only some of the blood up? Unless they planned to clean everywhere and ended up breaking off for some reason, maybe when Vicky called the house. A popular theory amongst internet sleuths is that Vicky was responsible for Lee's disappearance and probable murder. John Bradley, a school friend of Lee's, recalls her coming to school with bruises on her legs. He would ask her what happened and she would claim she fell. Another time she had a black eye, which she claimed was as a result of a horse kicking her, though John felt that something was going on at home. If John was right about something going on at home, it sounds like either Vicky or Barney, the stepfather, maybe both of them, were abusing Lee. However, Barney was not living at the property at the time of Lee's disappearance. He'd have to have quite a vendetta against her to come back to the house and kidnap or murder her after he and Vicky had split up. He not only helped search for Lee, but was investigated and found to have a good alibi. He also passed a polygraph test, leaving Vicky as the main suspect if we're to put aside the intruder theory. Vicky failed all three polygraph tests that were administered to her, 
though obviously lie detectors are debatably pretty unreliable so I'll take that with a pinch of salt. Maybe Vicky was abusing Lee and one day just accidentally took it too far and ended up killing her in a fit of rage. She could have taken the body to the car straight through the garage, hence nobody saw anything, and then of course hidden the body somewhere. It would have been a pretty tight time frame if she was confirmed to have been at work that day, though it could have happened the night before for all anyone knows. Police stated the blood was fresh, so it does seem kind of unlikely, but I wonder if there's any possibility that she could have maybe taken blood from the body to then use to stage the scene. I don't know if that's even possible, so if anyone has any knowledge on dead bodies or crime scenes or anything, please feel free to input in the comments. There are a few details that make me kind of suspicious of Vicky. Aside from being the last person to see Lee alive and the first person to discover the crime scene, it took her around 15 minutes to contact the police after arriving back home and searching for Lee. Apparently she searched the entire house, even the shed, before calling the police, despite seeing blood straight away and not knowing if the attacker was still there. I guess that's not too incriminating. She may have been so preoccupied with finding a daughter that she didn't consider her own safety. But how did it take her that long to search? There has to have been a delay. As already mentioned, I'm not sure she was being entirely truthful when she claimed this was the first time she'd left Lee home alone, amongst other little lies that she may have told. I personally think that Lee's nightgown being left in the laundry basket points more towards Vicky than an intruder. Vicky was known to be a so-called neat freak, so maybe out of habit she just threw the clothes in the laundry basket without even thinking. Surely if an intruder is going to take with them a body and whatever they started cleaning up with, they'd have taken the clothes Lee was wearing, why leave anything their DNA could be on? If Vicky's DNA was found on those clothes, however, that wouldn't be strange at all considering she lives there. What would be a little bit stranger though is if her DNA was found on whatever was used to clean up the blood which happened to be missing. Why would an intruder take that but not the clothes they changed Lee out of? Unless the nightgown was used to mop up the blood, but due to the pattern of blood on the clothing it sounded like she'd likely been wearing that when attacked. It's interesting that Lee's reading glasses were posted from Boonville, where there had been a sighting of her that turned out to be someone else. Maybe Vicky sent those to make the sighting seem more likely, addressing them to Barney to take the eye off herself. Why would an intruder even take her glasses and post them to the home? Unless it was meant to be some kind of message to Barney, maybe revenge or a threat of some kind? I do wonder if it could be 100% confirmed that the glasses actually belonged to Lee, or whether someone could have seen photos of Lee with those glasses and sent an identical pair to the family to taunt them. I have heard of similar occurrences in other cases before. Though I have also heard of cases that were an inside job, so to speak, where the culprit has sent items to themselves. I'm not sure if this is a sign of guilt, not thinking clearly due to grief, or Vicky being a bit of a crappy person, but she didn't tell Lee's father, Donald, that there was blood found in the house, so he only assumed his daughter had run away from what he was told. Which is pretty sad, imagine how he felt when he realised what had actually happened. According to him, Vicky had been seen at a car wash the night before without Lee, and had also been seen washing her doll the next day. If this is true, it definitely looks pretty suspicious. For what it's worth, Donald believes Vicky may be responsible. He said she had a bad temper and may have killed Lee in a fit of rage, then put her body in the boot of a car and hidden her somewhere. Many of the details which make Vicky look suspicious, however, rely on her actions leading up to her finding the crime scene. We're all always so quick to say, I wouldn't have done that, or why did she do this? And sometimes that does point suspicion in the right direction. But everyone acts differently and every family has a different norm. To claim someone must be guilty because they didn't act how you would have done or how I would have done in that situation is to avoid looking at the evidence objectively. There are also actions she made that could actually point towards her innocence, such as her hiring a private investigator and offering an undisclosed reward for any information, Surely if she was guilty, she wouldn't want the case investigating any further. Despite failing three polygraph tests, the fact that she agreed to take all three could potentially suggest more innocence than guilt. Beyond speculation, there's really no physical evidence to tie Vicky to Lee's disappearance and probable murder. Of course, absence of evidence doesn't mean evidence of absence, but you do need some kind of evidence to accuse someone of murdering the daughter. She has never been considered a suspect, though she does still remain a person of interest. 
As for my personal thoughts, I'm definitely suspicious of Vicky, but I'm not 100% sure that she did it. Vicky being responsible does make a lot more sense to me than an intruder, but I just don't think there's sufficient evidence to say that she's guilty. I guess there is even a small chance that Lee's still alive out there somewhere. Maybe she got attacked and ended up escaping and just went to start a new life or something. I mean, it is very unlikely, but I do hope that's what happened. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Do you think Vicky was guilty or do you think it was an intruder or do you have another theory entirely? If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.